hey y'all let's grab a cup of coffee or whatever your beverage of choice is and talk about git branching and merging yay so what is a branch a branch is the area where edits and commits are stored if you watched my previous video link up here then and where I talked about remote servers, then you will actually know that we already pushed to a branch, the main branch in that video. It doesn't by default, a git repo is on a master or a main branch. There has been a push in the community as there should be a push in all communities to get rid of the master terminology or to stop using the master terminology. Um, but that's a topic for a different video or maybe even a different blog post, or you can hit me up on my Twitch. Um, at Megan Wilson underscore, and we can talk all about it live. Um, most Tuesday, Thursday, Friday mornings at 6 45 AM. And I'd love to have a chit chat about it. Um, but that is a, like I said, a topic for another video that we'll talk about. Um, I'll be using main in the rest of this video. Maybe I'll say master. If I do say master, it's purely just for the fact that that's what the repo was using beforehand, before there was this big change. I will probably need to be going back and changing those repos. But for now, just know I'm going to try to use main from here on out. If you have master in yours, that's totally fine. And it will work just the same. So let's kick off. Like I said, what is a branch? A branch is the area where edits and commits are stored. Branches can be created whenever or wherever you need one. Doesn't matter where, doesn't matter when, you can create a branch just whenever you need one. Um, that's what makes Git really flexible, is it's just another commit on you to be able to go back or go back and forth to. We will talk about creating one in just a minute, but let's just keep going with what branches do, how they're useful. Uh, so creating a branch will give you a new area to work in that doesn't require adjust your main branch. When a branch is created, you create basically a fork in your Git repo. Uh, this is what a repo looks like with just commits. And this is what it looks like when you create a branch. And then, so you'll see, we have commit, 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 and then it branches off to have a separate commit on another line. So this just allows us to have basically two, I mean, you have basically a tree now. You have the the one linear, which is your main or your generally your main branch, um, that is where your code lives. And then you have the branches that come off the fork. So where the fork happens and that's where you can also do your work in. So why would you want to create these branches in your code? Well, you might want to create these branches in your code for two main reasons. Number one is to keep your changes isolated. Number two is if you're working on a team, it's really nifty to have different modules going at the same time. So someone can be working on feature A while another working person's working on feature B and you're working on bug number one. All three of you people can work on these separate code bases at the same time without having to worry about stepping on each other, which is pretty nifty. And you don't have to worry about breaking code or making sure you're always in sync. You'll be able to merge or get all that code back together later and deal with conflicts then. So like I said, the number one reason though that I really like to use branches is to keep changes isolated from my main code base. Uh, so what that means is I can, as a solo developer, I can have like my main code base and then branch off when I wanna create a new feature. That way my main code base can stay the same, people know what to expect. And then there can be like a development branch that has the next feature in it if I really wanted it. So let's actually talk about creating a branch. Now, how do you actually create a branch in the code? Well, you need to run a command and that is git branch and then the name of the branch. So I'm gonna go into terminal here and we're gonna make a branch on this git video series. Link will be in the description below. While you're down there, hit the like button if you found this useful. Subscribe button if you really want to as well. Um. So in this brand, in this Git video series, we're going to create a new branch. So we're going to hit Git branch and I'm going to call it branching video. We'll get nothing here to confirm. It's just, it's made. Then if we wanted to see the branches that are inside our code, we could actually just say Git branch. And now we have two branches. We have main and we have branching video. The main branch is the branch that we're currently on. That's why it's in green and has the asterisk on it. The branching video is a branch that we have that we can go ahead and switch on. 
the first thing we need to do is switch our working branch. So which branch do we want to get on? To do that, we use the checkout command. So by using the checkout command, that's how we can actually switch which branch we're on. Inside terminal, we say git checkout and then the name of the branch we want to switch to. So we're going to say git checkout branching video. And it tells us we were switched to branch. And now just to confirm, we can run that same git command again, that same git branch commit again, to be able to actually see what branch we're on. So here I'm gonna say git branch, hit enter. And now we can see branching videos in green with the asterisk meaning that is the current branch. So once you have actually checked out the branch, you can now make changes on the branch just like you would normally. You can do your git, you make your changes, you do your git add, you could do your commit message, and you push just like you normally would. So let's let's do that real quick. In VS Code here, we have the the same git video series I've been working with this entire time. We are on the branching video as we could see in the terminal. We're on that branching video branch. So now back in VS Code, what we can actually do here is add in another paragraph or actually I'll add in a header. And then just a little bit of text here. Now that I have that added, I have the text added, I've made some changes. Let's go ahead and run through our workflow where we add, commit, and then push. So inside the terminal, what I can do here is git add, and we're still in that index.html file. So by it being able to git add there, we will just say the file name, hit enter. That's been added. Now we need to add that. Now we need to add that commit message in here. So git commit dash m, adding a section branching. Now we've added that. Now we're going to push it up. Since this is the first time we've actually had to push, it's going to be slightly different than normal. So I'm going to say git push enter. Whenever I did git push enter, it told us that there was actually an error pushing it upstream. So pushing it to the remote. Um, so what we need to actually do is create a remote branch at the same time. It's telling us inside the terminal that what command we actually need to do. And that's that git push dash dash set upstream origin branching video. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that command just like it says, and we'll see it work. Now we've, we've seen it. It's going to work and there we are. Now it's, um, and now we've actually pushed up. And so if we go check out our GitHub repo now, we can actually see that a second branch has been made. So here you can see we have this branching video it has recent pushes. So it actually already updated the fact that we had um, some videos to get up there. Now that we have separate code, how do you actually get that code back together? I mentioned previously, one of a couple of the great things is that you can create features outside of the normal outside of the normal main, main branch. So you can be have feature A here, have feature B here, feature C here, and then bring them all back together. I also talked about there being able to be separate people working on the same repo and being able to again bring in feature A, bug fix B, feature C into your main code base. Well, that is how we bring so how we bring that code back together is by running a git merge command. We merge the code back to whatever branch you want it to come on. Um, the first step into merging your code is to actually be on the branch that you want the code to be in. So usually this is your main branch. Then you can run git merge and specify the branch name that you want. Hit enter and then the next step is optional where you delete the branch you just added. That's completely up to you, but let's run through this a bit. So now that we are back in the terminal, we're going to go ahead and run that checkout command to switch onto the main branch. So git checkout main. We have switched the branch to main. Um, our branch is already up to, uh, up to main. A good thing to do at this point is to run a git pull command at this point. That way you get all the changes in case there were, were some done and you just don't have it locally for whatever reason. So we're just gonna do a git pull. It's up to date, great. So now the next thing is to actually perform that merge. So we're gonna do a git merge. 
And then the branch name, which for me was branching. So for me, that was branching dash video. And then I hit enter. So now that the branch has actually been merged in, we actually have to push these changes that happen from the branch up to the remote server. Because right now we've just done everything locally. We just merged the branch for the branching video series locally on our machine. Now we gotta get that up to the remote server. So to do that, it's exactly the same way. We just run a git push command and everything has been pushed up. So now if I refresh here, so now by refreshing on github.com, we can actually see we have that added a section for branching in here. If I click on there, we can see in that main branch, we actually have everything together. We have it added here. We have those two lines that we added in. All that good stuff is actually there. So we can go into the commit history and see on the main branch, we added the section for branching, um, which is the commit that we have in the branch itself as well as that last commit because now they have merged and become one in the same at this point. Now that we've seen what it looks like on GitHub, I'm not actually going to run that delete branch command purely so that if you wanna go look at the GitHub repo, you can see the two different branches there. I So I kinda wanna talk about how I use branches in a real world scenario where I am really a solo independent developer at this point. I mainly work on iOS app development on the side as a solo dev there. So it's been fun, it's been great. It's a actually a really good time for me, um, but I actually utilize branches quite a lot, even though I really just work by myself on them. So how I like to use branches is I like to keep my main or my master branch completely on the latest release. Um, so my main and my master only show what's actually on the app store at that point in time. So let's go take a look at that in GitHub real quick. I mean, so now that we're in GitHub, we can actually see that there's two branches here. We have our master and then there's two branches. So let's go ahead and click on the two branches and see what's going on. Um, so we can see that I have my default branch, which is my master branch. So I, I'm using master in here um, because this was made before GitHub had the big switch to main. And I really need to go back and change this from master to main, but I haven't yet. Then I have my branches here of 2021-2. We can see that this, my branch is 31 commits ahead of master. So it actually is a lot further ahead. It has more changes, all that kind of stuff than master does. That's because 2021-2 is my next release. So I've actually been working in 2021-2 and just kind of left master alone at this point. The reason why I do this is because if there was a major show-stopping bug for my app, I don't want to have to make sure that my features and everything I'm releasing in 2021-2 is actually releasable. I'm going to want to put whatever's inside, I'm going to want to make that fix on what's on the app store at that point in time. So I can switch my repo from the 2021-2 branch while I'm working on it, go switch it to the master branch, go do my fix there. And then once that fix is done, I can actually push it up to the app store if I need to at that point in time. I don't have to get every all the features that were in 2021-2 shippable at that point. I can just go put the fix in master, fix it, ship it, and then get those changes into that branch from master to 2021-2. Like I said, this workflow really just allows me to keep bug fixes able to be able to happen um, really quickly, get them out, get them ready without having to compromise like features and stuff like that and having the users wait at that point in time. So that's my main reason for working with branches in that way. Now, if I'm adding a feature in the middle of a version, so if I wanted to add in a brand new feature, completely new into 2021-2, I would probably actually make that its own branch on that on the 2021-2 branch. So we would have a so line branch and then branch again off of there. That way, if I need to go back for whatever reason, I can go between the main changes on 2021-2 and the whatever I'm doing feature wise on the feature branch itself. It just allows me to have the flexibility of going back and forth. And with iOS apps, this is really nifty because 
if I, for whatever reason, left that feature branch into a, in a not able to be built state, then I can always go back to the 2021-2 branch and it can build and run and work on some other things at that point in time when I'm ready and then switch over. And when I'm ready, that not built branch doesn't affect anything else. It only affects that branch itself. And that's really all I have to say about Git branches, Git merging, all that kind of stuff. This was just really a brief overview of it. It wasn't really a like in-depth kind of deal, but you can find a lot of that info. I just wanted to give a really brief overview on how this worked, what I like to do with it, give some real world examples. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you found this useful, please make sure to hit that like button. It'll be really helpful for everyone involved here. Also, while you're down there, please hit the subscribe and notification bell. That way you get notified when there's new videos about developer tools, Swift tips, tech things, all while having a cup of coffee. And I'll